first thing, if I'm on a date with a broad and I spend over fifty dollars and she don't give me no pussy, she going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> what up, y'all? It's Q and A with Ronnie Ray. Make some noise in this video. Make some noise. <laughs> Shit. Shout out to the wire for that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mid the day, baby bros here. Lawrence Moore over there. La, La my Mo. man. What's up? La Mo. Lon Mo. Uh, <laughs> he wanna be called Lon Mo. Yeah, my <laughs> man Maddie Robinson's over there, Pimp Pro Chicago for sure. And on the phone with me today, man, is one of my cats, man. This son of a bitch right here, man. <laughs> uh, <it was> sad, <laughs> no, hold on, nigga. We gotta get this right. We're gonna make sure I get you the right intro. This is the stage shit here. Son of a bitch right here, man. It's fucking hilarious. His cadence is the most original cadence I ever heard in my life. His jokes are crazy. He's a student of the game. He's going to be one of the greats. Put your hands together right now. Craig Smith, y'all. Craig Smith. Oh, yeah. What's up, man? I'm in here, man. What's up, man? <laughs> What's happening with you, man? <laughs> Motherfucker, man, you know. <laughs> What's happening with you, man? Motherfucker, man, you know. Are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Man. What's poppin', man? man? What's we, going on? We doing this shit. Man, what's up uh, with you, man? God damn it. The goddamn comedy, man. Not, I'm trying to think. I was trying to think. I was, the first question I asked everybody is like how we met. And I'm trying to remember uh, when I met you. I think I saw you on a rap video, y'all doing a comedy cypher the first time. I'm like, who was this nigga? You know what I mean? I didn't know who you were. Man. And then like the next week I saw you um at Marty's or something like that. And like, oh, that dude was cool and shit. Yeah, I, th I think it would have to be either at Marty's or the Ha Ha, one of them two scumbag spots. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn open mic life is the bullshit. You know, working on the craft, man. That's, that's exactly what we met in the trenches, you know. All up in the yeah, trenches, that's been, man. That's been about, what, five, six years or so. Damn, that shit just seemed forever ago, man. Motherfuckers done graduated eighth grade and high school. <laughs> 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 Buddy, <laughs> <laughs> come in and he just turned into teenager. He's 20 years old by the time we know each other. And shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm 34, so I was like 28, 29. Man, time flies like a motherfucker, man. Uh, yeah, but so you true. were grinding, man. You were coming from like way out. Well, you come from you ride like an hour to get to LA and shit. Did you Check do the this out, I was driving probably like 45 miles each way to, to go do stand up comedy. Everything. Mm. That's that's yeah. That's how tired I was of 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 working for people, man. I felt like I had to start honing my craft, and I was doing whatever it took. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, Fuck the the gas money, and that shit was like five dollars then. This is <laughs> Obama to put yeah. his foot down on the gas, <laughs> right? Mean. Man, real talk, man. And I had the truck back then too, so I was probably spending like two fifty a week on on gas for comedy, and it still wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> funny when I started, man. You know, yeah, yeah. You had to pay to perform, and you had to eat some and shit. Yo, that was a budget. <laughs> Yeah, I had to pay for a bunch of motherfuckers to be quiet when they're supposed to be laughing. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, I'll never forget that, man. Yeah, but we here now. Oh, no, we good, man. Yo, you know you got a fan base in Chicago, dog. They really looking forward to seeing your ass. And who that crazy light-skinned guy on okay. my brother's videos and shit? That's... What's the name of the thing? Oh, I don't understand. You. I don't understand you videos about the relationships. They like, this nigga Craig, funny as hell. He should run. He should be president. They start naming people. Uh -huh. <laughs> he had a whole bunch of guys. And they like, they, they named their top three, and I wasn't on it. I'm like, well, fuck all your friends. Bro. <laughs> hey, I love to be president, man. It's so, so many things I would change, man. Like what? First thing, if I'm on a date with a broad. And I spent over fifty dollars, and she don't give me no pussy. She going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you be president out there swinging though? It's funny as fuck. You shouldn't have to spend shit if you're the president. Yeah. That's <laughs> That's theft, bitch. You can't be stealing money from me and not providing a service. <laughs> Don't you know I'm the president? Life, bitch. <laughs> I just, I would give you some, but too late now, goddamn it. Give me your free. I think the real question is, is that before or after taxes? <laughs> <laughs> he said that before or after taxes and shit. <laughs> real talk, real talk. That's, that's, that is not right, man. You know. No, you, you, I love you, Chicago, huh? you said, why you love Chicago? Hell yeah, yeah. Motherfucker, love your ass here, man. Um, yeah. 
Doing it, you said open mic. You were talking about open mics. Like, how long should a comic do open mics? I'm asking all the comics this question on here. Well, I mean, that that's a multifaceted answer, man, because I think you should always do open mics. But one thing you taught me mm-hmm. as my bro in comedy is that you, once you get to a point where you got yourself, you know, 10, 15 minutes of solid material, you got to start doing shows. Right. So you got to get out of that open mic mode. But open mic is like the gym for comedians. So you will always want to be in the gym working out that muscle, you know, because it ain't how many people watching you. It's how you work, you know, so right. you got to. You got to get past that thinking you, you know, a star stage. You know, oh. people always people always want to do shows where it's hundreds of people and everybody laughing and they feel like, you know, they feel like a star, you know. But what make you a star is, just, you know, it's what you do, whether it's nobody laughing or everybody laughing or if it's one person laughing or if it's one person in the room, you got to you got to go at it the same way. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, because you will be humbled real quick in this business. <laughs> you <know, laughs> yeah. will have your best. I remember doing I did 100 open mics out there. I bombed in Florida years ago and I did 100. Oh, I said, I'm going to do 100 mics in 100 days. This is before Marty's. At Marty's, you can go up six hours straight and just get on each stage. He had three stages in there. You can go on. This is before that. I was paying at the ha-ha and all that stuff. And I think I got to like 97 and I finished 100 off. But right. I looked at I marked every day down. And I graded all of them. And I looked back at it a couple of months ago. And the worst show and the best show was on the same night. Right. So you never know. I had the worst show first. And I'm like, I got to get back up. And I pressed hard on that. So, yeah, you never know. So just it's a confidence thing, too. So, right. you, you know, it's like a boxer. If you're not... If you're not trained, you ain't trained enough for the fight, you're going to definitely get your ass knocked out. And then you realize, too, right, that just because people laughing don't mean you're funny, right? That's you know? <laughs> Yeah, but you know you know what's funny? Somebody said something. What was that um, show? Um, Jerry Seinfeld's Comedian. Have you seen that documentary? Uh, yeah. It's fucking classic, man. And he's still, um, my man, um, Colin, Colin, what's, we got Colin's um, last name. But he said, um, yeah, he said, um, he said, when you're on stage and you're and they're laughing and you're miserable, that's when it's working out. Right. Yeah. Right. So to keep it fun for you, you gotta just constantly keep creating or hurry up and drop that shit so you can move on to the next thing. So. You know, I, there's this there's this saying, man, that I picked up from a from a uh, this dude that was in the metaphysics, man, Doctor Valentine, man, and, it's, and it changed my life, man. And the saying is basically that. As as black people, we are all gods having the human experience, mm. and what makes and what makes us gods is our ability to create. So as long as you create, you 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 build that godlike confidence. You know what I mean? Right. And and I think that's what it's about. You know what I mean? It's it's it's, it's first about creating, and then it's second about you being the definition of what you are. You know, so funny. If, if to me, you're funny. If I feel like what you do is is you and you don't care about what people think you're just doing what you love to do you know what i'm saying right and to me that's the most important thing man because when you get out here and start tap dancing man and they say tap dance shoes don't work you got to put on a thong you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's not entertaining no more nigga. Yeah. Like, put this on. Yeah, um yeah, you got my size <laughs> right. do it. yeah you're right you know because that's what they do man you know since you know it's a business, man, and these and these folks at the top, man, they just want they just pull out that cookie cutter and try to mimic whatever cookie take tastes the best. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Uh, you, you just gotta you gotta create your own formula, man. True, true, all true. So yeah, you speaking of other comics out there, who who's been your influences in this game? Uh famous or famous or out there just grinding like oh, I might this do. Regardless of what, they just doing comedy. Are you who you a fan of? Who who are the people that you look out for? Oh man, I mean, what well, obvious ones would be the Corey Holcombs and the Bill Burrs and the, <laughs> and the, and, the, and the and the Red Foxes and all those legendary type of dudes, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, um, as far as people that people may not know, uh, you know, I mean, people know who. TK Kirkland is. I even, you know, I like a lot of a lot of comics don't give Kevin Hart his just do. I I love Kevin Hart. I like Naeem Lynn, one of the dudes that open for him. Right. Um, I like uh uh, you know, some of the cats that I know that start coming up when I came up, like the Tony Bakers and the you know, I, I fuck with a lot of people. My boy Rail Battle, you, 
There's a lot of That's people. That's all I was waiting for. That's all I was waiting for. <laughs> I was fishing for compliments that whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing. It's all good. Thanks, man. You know, I like a lot of cats, you know. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. That's cool, man. So, like, would you, like, your career, what did you, I, I see a lot of people that do it, and I'm out there, and you can damn that. I've been doing it so long when I was out there at the open mic scene, and I, I can look at a comic and tell right off, like, he won't do this for life. Right. Yeah, if he get a TV show, that's it. Right. Are you one of those comics? And no disrespect, the people who like what they like, but is that something? You, would you, you would you do stand up forever, regardless on what other career you get? Yeah, I'm gonna always do stand up comedy. That's I'm all, yeah, till I, you know, what I'm saying, to the day, till I'm an old man. Hopefully, I make it that far. But yeah, I'm gonna always do it, man. It's, you know, it's just one of the things I love. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you've grown so much, man. I'm proud of you, dog. I remember oh, we did, you. um, we did, you had me come out to Ontario. My friends couldn't get it in the damn club. I had to go in and do the set and leave for four minutes. Oh, it was sold out like a motherfucker in there, though. And you were hosting. Oh. And I can tell what watching you, you were like, you were kind of jittery. You was around when you were new. And it was like, oh, shit. And then I saw you, like, about six months later, man. You just destroyed it. And I had to follow that shit. I was kind of like, okay, damn, this nigga kill it. I got to follow him in the open mic, and I was kind of nervous. So when you get to uh, that level, when you get me nervous, I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, this nigga, uh, he going to be all right. <laughs> Thank gonna, you. He going to be all right. You gave me a compliment. I gave you one back. It's a bromance. <laughs> it's a bromance, nigga. No. <laughs> I appreciate it. You know, I do this for the people, man, well as myself, man. <laughs> oh, nigga, you got to tell. Put this over here. I don't give a fuck. I told my aunt the story the other day about what you told me. And you did it on stage. You got to tell, you got to put this on the radio show. <laughs> Let the world know when you first saw Beyonce in person. Oh, man. I was, <laughs> I, I was this is before the lemonade, y'all. So, okay, here we go. Yeah, man, I was at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in Hollywood on Sunset and Gower. And it was when that... uh. It was when that song was out. I'm a survivor. Right. That song. So I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm outside the restaurant waiting to be seated, and I, and I'm facing my boy in a conversation, right? And so the way I'm standing, my back is to the door, and my boy can see the see over my shoulder. He can see everybody coming out, but I'm facing him, so I can't see. I can't see shit, right? right. So we talking and shit, and as we're talking, his eyes light up, and I follow his eyes. And and there stood Beyonce. She was standing outside of Roscoe's by herself for like a for like a small moment in time. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know that my my inner, you know, player kicked in. And uh, at the time, it was when two ways were popular. I had like a little blue see through two way. So I pulled out my two way, and I kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell no! That's not the joke though. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, I kind of assumed that, uh, you know, that she was sitting there waiting on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I pull up my two-way and I wave it at her. You know what I'm saying? And she kind of smirk and smile. And uh, so I'm thinking the whole time, like, yeah, okay. So, yeah, the bitch know that uh, she know a player was going to be here. So let me go on over there and handle my business, you know? <laughs> so I, so I, start, I start walking over towards her. And when I get like in like in, in distance where she can hear what I'm saying, her father walks out and he's like, how can I help you, son? <laughs> right? How can amazing. I help you? Right? Yeah. So I, I get nervous and shit. Right. And and I was only 19 at the time I was a youngster. So I didn't know to address the father like I think your daughter is beautiful or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? I just got quiet. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I put my hands up like the nigga just caught me stealing. Like I was just standing there looking. <laughs> <laughs> And so I, as I'm standing there looking, um, the other girls in the group, Kelly and the two other insignificant bitches, walk out with me. <laughs> 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 and oh, shit. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, they, walk, they walk out, right? And so the limo pulls up. And um, I'm still sitting there. As they walk away, I hear Kelly say, damn, girl, he's kind of cute, right? And Beyonce still didn't say nothing. And I'm sitting there quiet. They all walk, they all walk and hop in the limo, and the door shuts. And when the door shut, the sound of the door shutting, like, what snaps me out of my little trance and shit. So 
So I run over to the limo and I gesture for them to uh, roll the window down, right? So now I'm nervous, but I'm still I'm still trying to keep it cool and I didn't know what to say, right? right. And so, so the limo starts to drive off and the window was down and I'm kind of jogging next to it. And this is the only shit I can think to say. And the guys, the limo's pulling off, I say this. I said, uh, do any of you bitches like bowling? <laughs> <laughs> And they bounce on me, man. (laughs) (laughs) That's classic shit. Fuck my shit all the way off, man. (laughs) (laughs) She ever see your head? You know, nigga, I like bowling. That's crazy. (laughs) I got ahead of myself. You know what I'm saying? Nah, man. You were thinking about date number four. Yeah, I'm on date four. I'm like, (laughs) real talk. Hell no. But I learned a lot from that experience, man. You know, I wish it was happening now, though. Oh, you see her now? I said, I wish it would happen now because I would know what to do. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You live and learn, man. You never know who you're going to run into, though. You might see Maya yeah. on the street. I don't know if it. But now we can Google and, you know, we can get acclimated with the broad now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah. Just post- Facebook or Twitter or some shit? Yeah. yeah I, I could know how her day was going and everything, you know? Now you can be a stalker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you like Whole Foods and shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit. So yeah, but well, speaking of that, then celebrities. Or is she like the the most famous celebrity you ever met out there? Because you live out in LA, you're from there. Yeah, yeah. I've not seen a lot of broad, but that's the only one that I've uh, really tried to holler at. Damn. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot, man. I've, I've seen Maya walking around here. I've seen uh, what else about seeing? I've seen the what's the two bras that kind of falling off, but they still. It, uh, this the the twins, Mary Kate, Tia, Tia Tamara, Mary Kate, Elsa. What the fuck y'all talking? About? <laughs> you talking about the full house chicks or you talking about yeah. the sister sister chicks? Both. Right, right, right. I seen them. I seen uh, which ones? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of them. No, no, no. Uh, Tia and Tamara. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I seen them. I seen uh, man, I seen so many uh, I I. I ran. I ran into uh, what's her name? Uh, dang. Uh, uh, damn. What's her name, man? Well, I thought it was L. Carter, but it ended up being T.D. Jake. I can see how you make that mistake. I'm about to fall off this chair. Well, Neil Carter's dead. That's the only reason I'm using it. Brother Pete Neil Carter, yeah, give me a break up in here. But shout out to T.D. Jakes. Still, and shout right? out to T.D. Right. Jakes, too. <laughs> He's never going to listen to this, so you can say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm trying to say, but you know, at them comedy clubs, you see everybody. I, I guess the most uh, influential person I ever met was probably Russell Simmons. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's there all the time. It's his show. But, um, yeah, he. He had ADD all the time. ADD. I was surprised. Yeah. And he, he's a real nigga, man. Did you perform? Nah, I didn't perform. You know, they don't let niggas like me perform. At <laughs> you might say something. They told me that. I was like, they ain't gonna never have you at the comedy store, dog. Hey, why, like, yeah. You gonna say something, nigga. I'm like, what? I'm not gonna just do my act. Yeah. Nah, you gonna get comfortable and you gonna get in there and just start start a revolution or some shit. Like, this <laughs> <man?"> <laughs> <laughs> it's a black dude telling me this shit. I'm like, damn, dog. What the fuck? Hell yeah, man! They they don't like niggas like us on that side of town, man. Would you would like with with that though in, in play? Would you would you kind of like sell yourself? Would you just yeah, change the way you act to get some shit? Because you seem like that, man. Fuck them motherfuckers. You have that. Me and you had that same attitude. Now is that yeah. a gift or a curse that we have yeah, that? I think it's a gift, man. Because uh, at the end of the day, man, you know it take time to grind diamonds. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, uh, so I'm not. I'm not interested in. Uh, I'm not interested in 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 doing the shit that every, that 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 cookie cutter type shit. I want to be myself. You know. Right. Because you know, I I just don't think I could survive in the industry if I had to. Uh, like, if they was like, just think about it, man. Like, like that whole Illuminati thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. But talk like, about that. This one. Go ahead. Yeah. 
So, you know, I, I was, you know, with a whole Illuminati conspiracy is that in order for you to make it, that you got to give up your ass, right? Yeah. That was and so I, left, I left comedy with all my heart, right? But if I knew that five years from now my career would come down to my ass, then this would be the last joke I ever told. <laughs> 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 I'll be digging ditches for the rest of my life. Ain't nobody gonna let me do this. Yeah, this would be it, man. Cause you know, I mean, that ain't funny. Your ass ain't funny. You know what I mean? So <laughs> why is that? That's the go-to. Like this fuck Illuminati. Is everybody yeah. Illuminati just gay as fuck. What is? I don't know what it is. I have no clue. I don't even know if it's real. If it is, it's fucked up. You, you know, Professor Griff talks that shit. Cause right. Will Smith took it in the ass. That's why he get twenty million and all that stuff. I don't know. I don't. I have no clue. I hope yeah. did not have that problem because it will be a problem that day. I might die that day. <laughs> he's trying right. to do that shit to me. I, something's gonna happen to somebody. And it's not gonna be it's me. A, it's just. A, I think it's basically. I think it's a metaphor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's selling your soul or whatever. You might yeah. as well. Yeah. If you're not being you and the Hollywood yeah, shuffle so. moments and shit. Like if you don't take yeah. it though, somebody gonna take the job regardless. Right. Of that. Just that. Right, because I know if that was real, then it's probably some perverted gay dude, you know what I'm saying, out there setting people up, you know what I'm saying, taking asses and, every, and, and niggas getting fucked with shit and still the same. <laughs> <laughs> people like, getting like, fucked with nothing like, nah, we, we never thought yeah, you were talented. Like, right we, have, <laughs> we, don't, we, have, we never have a job for you, nigga. We just want to fuck yeah, your ass. It's a nigga right now. I've been giving that. This is the fifth time I've given you my ass, and I still ain't got no time. <laughs> <laughs> my sag dudes are paid. You still ain't getting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah. I think it's a metaphor, man. For I think, it, like you said, it's just you know selling your soul. Are you, are you gonna do what you want to do? Basically, are you gonna fight that fight for yourself, or are you looking at looking for somebody to do it for you? You know what I mean? Right. Hell yeah. And you got and you got to pay the cost if you want somebody to do it for you cuz in life you pay for what you don't know. You know what I mean? True. Mhm. Good. So you, you know that's how Craig, Craig, what's happening, man? It's Lawrence, man. What's up, Lawrence? How you feel, man? <laughs> oh, man, I'm great, man. How you been, bro? I'm all right, man. Um couple questions. My brother mentioned it earlier about the uh web series we worked together on called I don't understand you. Um there's one question that I get all the time when I talk when the people bring the, uh, discuss the show with me. They want to know where are where those answers genuine coming from you? Was that the real Craig Smith? And I wanted to clarify that right now with the people. Yeah, that's me. That's me. Then the motherfucking boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my second and then, question. Oh, I'm sorry. You go. Go ahead. Oh, no, I just think that me, I, I got this thing about myself where I feel like I speak for for working class people, you know what I mean? So so when I, when I do stuff like that, I just try to give the answers. Like, I try to filter my answers through either experience, experiences I've had or experiences that I know people I, I've dealt with have had. So it can be relatable to, to everybody, you know what I mean? All right, all right. And the second question is, I need you to define this. What is a scum bucket? <laughs> well, a scum bucket, bitch. <laughs> a, a scum bucket is anybody who expects you to do something for them that they can't do for themselves. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I guess you would say scum bucket. Then yeah. you say that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Their bags of scum buckets. <laughs> you can't do it for yourself, bitch. So you use a scum bucket. Yeah, yeah. Right. But you want to make me feel bad because I can't do what you should be able to do for you, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a scum bucket, man, you know? Cause there's this thing in psychology called transference that that people use, like, and it, and it works with groups of people where, like, they did some experiments at one point where they had, like, a, a person run towards a crowd, and then the whole crowd would just start running and follow behind that person, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, and, and transference works like that because if because what people do is they'll take emotional frustration in life because they ain't shit they maybe they ain't working or they broke and then they use that shit to fuck you up trying to transfer that emotion and that and that depression onto you you know what I mean and so you know when you become conscious of that you know you got to fight that fight and 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 realize that you got to be the definition of what makes you happy and what you are so scumbuckets always try to make you feel 
how they feel. You know what I mean? When it's when it's not good. You know what I mean? And so that's who I'm talking to. So if you take that serious, I'm just trying to check that uh check that 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 weakness inside of you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm gonna put that whole monologue on like my computer and let the audio play and have like the forest and shit and. And sands and all that stuff. <laughs> I can see that shit going somewhere, dog. Nah, nah man. You shit. know, I mean, let me tell you something. I done seen everything, man. I, I, there's some people that no matter how bad life gets, they still do what they got to do, right? Like, I know a girl that's stripping the pay for Timo. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said Timo at first. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, Timo? Timo. Like Timo Team- therapy. Yeah, I know. I thought he said, I thought he said Timo. I'm like, that's like a video Timo. game and shit. Like, like Timo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this man, well, he needs to find another job. It's only $35. It's only $35. I didn't know she was sick. I didn't know she was sick till she went to give me a dance and her wig fell in my lap. Oh, God <laughs> damn. <laughs> 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 Uh, Maddie got a question that for you. Like extra. Yo, Craig, what up? It's Maddie. Question for you. What's, What's happening, happening, bro? What's happening, bro? I, question, I got I got two questions for you. All right. Uh, uh, first one: You've been doing comedy for a while. How long did it take you to find your voice on stage? Right. Uh, well, here's the thing, right? So before I start doing comedy, uh, well, I'm still a MC, but I was a hip hop artist, right? Mm-hmm. And so. I got four albums, right? And so, and so, what I would do at my shows because my hip hop career wasn't really going too good. I would be frustrated and shit, you know. So I would bag on people in the audience, and I would I, I always, I always been a good bagger. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I do a show and I'm expecting maybe 300 people and and 20 to show up, and I just would just bag on those 20 people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and so one time a dude came up to me. He's like, "Man, you should try to do comedy, man. You're a dope rapper, but you're funny as fuck too, man. You should try to do it." So, so I started. When you first start doing comedy, what a lot of people don't realize is like, there's no um, there's no book to it, so you don't know where yep. to go, how to get started. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I had I had a boy who was doing it at the time, and he took me and my other boy with him, my boy OC, rest in peace, who was actually funnier than me. Oh wow. And, uh, and, uh, and so, and so that's how I got started going with him and, and my other boy, OC, you know? And, uh, so yeah, that's how I got started. No. That's what, that, was, that was the question, right? How I got started, right? Yeah. Just like how you got started and just like finding your voice, you know, cause when you get on stage, oh, okay. people look at like, you have those people who write those people who just get topics and just like vent and those people who just like speak from that personal experience. So just seeing which one, right, just, okay. like, you know, yeah. So the type of so the type of MC I was, I was already like a conscious type of rapper. So like mm-hmm. the shit that J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar and them type of dudes do now, I was doing that shit like ten years ago, but everybody wanted to be a, a, a gangster. Well, I'm in LA, so everybody was a gangster or a blood or something, mm-hmm. you know, like a yep. you know and that shit wasn't really popular, you know. So it was only me and a few type of niggas doing that out here. And so uh so I already had the ability to connect with the way to talk about exactly the way I felt in my life experiences. So when I got into comedy, I think it was kind of cheating a little bit because I already knew how to tap into that voice, but I didn't really understand how to do it continuously until about three and a half, four years in. And, and, um, and yeah, so that's, that's where I'm at now. I'm like almost six years in. And so about three and a half, four years in is when I was, is when I was able to really tap into it. Dope. Dope. Yeah, this other one. Uh, when you think the reign of light skin dude is going in, man? I'm just, I ain't got no <laughs> walk up to Beyonce, talk to her confidence. Hey, say, say, say it again, say it again. The reign of the light skin nigga. When is it going to stop? Oh, man. Hey, man, I don't think it's ever going to stop, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a light skin training all the time. I got, he like, man, I'll ride you over there, Ronnie. You did this, Craig. He like, oh, I'll ride you to the club. I'll drive, bro. I get in this car. He bumping the king of light skin, nigga. L. DeBarge was on and shit. Like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> like, man, I like this shit, dog. <laughs> yeah, he light skin all the way. <laughs> Hey, you know what's crazy is my family is like, like a mixture of light and dark, like every black person. But right. long story short, I didn't really realize I wasn't really conscious of that until probably like 
high school, junior high. You know what I mean? I know I was light skinned, but in my family, like we didn't really, we didn't really, you know, we didn't really talk about that type of stuff more a lot. It was, it was just more so like, uh, you know, if you could fight in my neighborhood, then you was black. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you couldn't fight, then that's you know, what I mean, that's when all the other shit would come into play. You'd be you know dark than the motherfucker when you lose the fight. Yeah. You consider Caucasian. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk, though. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Your credit better be yeah. good, nigga. This <laughs> <laughs> Q, this Q and A with Ronnie Ray. We here, Lon Mo, <laughs> Lon Mo is here. My man, Maddie Robinson on the phone. Craig, Craig Smith, my homie, comedian, yeah, all that shit, man. But we were talking about. I wanted to ask you. We were talking about um, selling your soul. I asked right. my man Henry Coleman this. You know Henry. Um, oh yeah. I asked him this. I said. If you had a chance to be on the road with a comic that you, you probably wouldn't phrase this way, but yeah, you hear an interview, be like, I didn't even say it like that. But <laughs> if you had a chance to open up for like your favorite comic and you up there and you go out there and give it your best after like two shows and he tells you to cool it down for a minute, don't be as funny, would you do it? Hell no. Nah. Yeah. Nah, fuck no. Okay, I got that. I got the. I got the question from him. I remember he told me that he was killing it, and the guy was like, "Hey man, you gonna have to be cool, and you have to slow down with the funny and shit." I'm like, "Wow, how I mean, insecure I've, can you be?" You know what I'm saying? I've experienced something like that where the the nigga didn't tell me that he just stopped asking me to come open for him. Oh damn! Wow, damn. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it, you know what I'm saying? And I and it couldn't have been because I wasn't funny because I was destroying. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, man, these niggas act like bitches, man. Some of your heroes <laughs> act like yes. bitches. Yes. They don't talk, man. Yeah. You know? No, you ain't what like. I like about comedy, man. If you, if you choose to do comedy and you really love this, you will meet your hero. Whoever yes. that is, you will meet that nigga and get a chance to see what his personality is. Like with the hip-hop and... And other forms of art where, you know, there may be people you look up to, it's very difficult to get to them. But in comedy, you are going to meet the nigga who you feel like is the reason why you do this. You know what I mean? Wow. Mm. I have. I met all yeah. those guys. I never, never never met Martin. I never shook Martin's hand. Everybody else that, in Chappelle, those are the only two guys I haven't <laughs> met. But everybody, like, they coming out of the woodworks and like... Don Marrera and shit. Like, what the fuck? He like standing he in line. Hey, how you doing, man? We talked for a few minutes. It was crazy. And then yeah. they like, Damon, like, man, can you watch my camera for me? It was crazy. Right. So, yeah, you know, he'd be like, I'm, I'm taking my set. You know, watch my... I know his son. So, it was yeah. like, it's, I guess he seen me hanging out with his son. That's why he thought it was safe to leave his shit there. And I should have yeah. took his wallet. Cause, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he got some goddamn money. But no, nah, he's cool, man. But no, nah, you meet your hero, man. You and me, you, you, yeah, it, it ain't, yeah, it's not like it's it's a very unique experience. Like, you know, the the have nots are often rubbing shoulders with the haves in this business. So you get to see, you get to see some stuff, man. And I, and all my experiences have been pretty good. Even the comic who doesn't allow me to open up for him, we still cool, and I haven't brought that up because at the end of the day, it's your career and it's your responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you know what I'm saying to do what you got to do. You know, but uh. Yeah, you'll see some things, man. There's comics out here knocking each other out, and and there's comics. It, 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 there's some wonderful, wonderful, horrific things happening in the, in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking about that shit now, like with with that, because I used to think, all right, I never had that. It took me a while to start opening up to people, because I'd be in there, and you wouldn't even think I'm doing comedy and shit. So when they call me up, I go up and do my thing. So I, I when I started... I saw like a lot of comics. And I'm like, oh, let me, let me ask this guy, can I open for him? And I never would get the okay. They were like, oh man, you were great. And you were great, man. You know, you'll be great when you start headlining. Like, I'm not you, letting you, you feature great. for me, nigga, because you're going to kill me. You know what I mean? So we're not doing yeah, that. Yeah, you can't feature, nigga, because you're 5'9. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nigga, I can't have a nigga bigger than me on my lineup, nigga. Just don't know that. <laughs> oh, he 5'9. Okay. I'm 6'1, nigga. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, nah, man, you're going to be good when you start headlining. For now, stay your ass at this mic, nigga. I'm like, damn, dog, for real. <laughs> Then you run into I mean, them later, they don't say shit to you. Like, fucking ass. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to name mean, drop. I, it's a whole lot of different politics, man. It's very, it's very, if you get caught up in those politics, man, you find yourself the same place in year 20 that you were in year two, you know? So you just got to kind of just 
put your head down and, and just and just create and just don't not really care what else is happening. I mean, you got to find a way to be relevant so people know who you are in this business, but you just got to create because because people I don't know for, for some reason in this industry, like people always start off doubting you. You got to prove like you really have to prove yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then once you prove yourself, it starts over again. They doubt something else. So you could be funny, and you could be doing barbecue pit jokes, but then they'll be like, well, the nigga ain't got no jokes about boiling hamburgers, though. I know you can barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about hot dogs and ribs, nigga. You talking about those burgers. And then, yeah, and then when, that's the, when, that, when you're good at that, well, what about sushi? I bet the nigga can't rap sushi. <laughs> you know what I mean? Never please anybody. Yeah, you can't do that, man. Hey, it's a show that I recommend everybody watching that's on now. Dice Andrew Dice Clay got his own show on Showtime. It's funny. I watched show. the first episode. That's just hilarious. It's hilarious. Man. It's just comedy, but I, I, it's a well written show, man. And I think that that is a is a very good microcosm of 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 what it is to just do what you do and just focus on what you do, and you know things that fall in place. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but yeah, but thinking about that somewhat. Um, so what? With this question, we'll lead into this. Uh, what is the worst and best thing about being a comedian? Because we were talking uh, about all the problems yeah. about comedy. Let me know what, you know, I want to know what's the the worst thing and the best thing about doing it. Okay, so the, the worst thing about being doing comedy is that if you're good, you like, you, you're never satisfied. Right. You know what I mean? Like, which is could be, I mean, that shit takes a toll on relationships and friendships and all type of stuff. Cause you got to constantly be either thinking about it or putting in some type of work, you know, and right. people tend to feel, feel neglected. You know, the best thing is when you talk about your own life experiences, the, when, when people really connect to it and they relate to it, they, they, they can utilize that in, in their own lives, you know? So I like, you know, I like, I like putting my little stories out there because I want people to know that there's somebody out there who thinks the stuff that they think and actually says it. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, don't be scared to say what's on your mind, you know? I mean, you know, and so, yeah, so that's the best thing, just being able to speak my mind. Because I always worked in corporate America and I always had to tone shit down, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I, wa I want to be able to say the shit to your boss that you can't say, you know? Right. And, you know, you know, so yeah, that you know, mm -hmm. so that's the best thing about it. That's that's speaking your mind, saying what's on your mind. And the worst, the worst Did you is, is already? Never, no. I don't think so. never being never being satisfied, man. Right, you did answer it. Dope, yeah, man. no, yeah, it's tough. It's tough, man. You you know, but I mean, it's it's good and bad. You know, okay. you know, you have um, mm -hmm. you have a company now, um, the the Power Party album. What's the name of it? Barefoot. Entertainment is that it? Yeah, it's called Bully Foot. Bully Foot. Is, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and 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 the slogan is "Fight for Creative Freedom," mm -hmm. and it's basically a, a you know a comedy production company slash record label, and basically I just produce uh, comedic content for comics, and I make it to where you can listen to it on Pandora or purchase it, you know, and the whole idea is just to provide a platform that's that's comparable to the you know the underground hip hop platform in a way where where you can actually find content you know uh, of an artist when he's hungry and not trying to fill into some certain pocket he just being who he is on stage or just mm. talking about what the fuck he wants to talk to you know cuz i feel like in this industry in comedy there's no in between either you're like the biggest nigga right, right. Are you nobody? You know what I'm saying? I, I want to provide a platform where, where when people are saying, you know, Kevin Hart is the funniest dude, I want to provide a platform where the production quality is up to par, where, where I can give you an alternative. Not saying that Kevin Hart ain't the funniest dude, but I feel like it needs to be more competition. You know, people are, you know, it's like, I don't I like how the industry allows outside sources to crown who the illest comedian is, you know what I'm saying? And it's never consistent either. It's like, okay, you get it one year. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I remember I had a picture on my wall. Well, I used to put them cats on my door. Like, I had, when I first started doing stand-up, it was Rock and Chris Rock and Eddie and Pryor and all that. But I had two um, magazine covers, and it was like one year uh, Chris Rock was on it, and it said, The Funniest Man Alive. 
And then on the other cover of uh, Chris Tucker, the King of Comedy. You know what I mean? Then I had the Kings of Comedy shit. So I'm like, you can only crown like one or two guys at a time. And I don't think it's fair because it's not, it's, I want it to be that way, actually, like hip hop, because you have a lot of comics to go from. And now it's just one dude and they're getting all the jobs. Or, you know, he's killing the movie scene and Steve Harvey getting all the TV shows. And Michael Strahan don't even do comedy. There's some bitches everywhere. <laughs> so. <laughs> He hung out with comics and shit. Gary O, that's Gary O'Neill's homie. And Michael Strand is probably one of the coolest celebrities I ever met, but he's getting all the damn job and he played football. But you know why, though? We talked about it earlier. He's familiar. They know these guys. So until we do something outrageous or they put give us a platform to do the shit, that's the only way we're going to be able to change it. So Yeah, and we got to create that platform, man, because look, man, at the end of the day, man, this uh, the people at the top of this industry, I, I really believe, beyond the whole Illuminati and taking motherfuckers' asses, I'm not talking about them type of people. I'm talking about the regular, uh, you know, person that's just trying to do the right thing. Nine times out of ten, they don't have a connection to our experiences as, as I would say, non-white people. Right. And so a lot of the choices that they make are ran through the filter of what they're comfortable saying. And, and that's because we allow them to pick and choose the content that we accept. Right. And the, and the, what made hip hop was so, so great is that hip hop was a counterculture of expression that came out of the fact that we weren't allowed to express ourselves. And so comedy hasn't, comedy hasn't fully went through that change. I mean, the greatest comics did that with the priors and the foxes and all that, but but it seems like we're comfortable taking our art and just handing it over to some, you know, Ivy League graduate or some person who really has no connection with, with, with our struggle, and we're comfortable with them saying whether it's okay or not, you know what I'm saying? And that's what hip-hop can do, and that's why hip-hop grew to the level that it grew to, is because we became the okayers of, of our art, you know what I'm saying? And that's what that's what comedy needs to go through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. yeah. Well, hey, you, know? you only got a good start with the um, the bear. I'm talking about. Say it again. Bullyfoot, Bullyfoot Entertainment, man. And I'm gonna send you my stuff over too. I, you say you helped me out with my album coming. It's out right now. Y'all don't know. Um, out of oh, my yeah. system, um, EP Value One, Part One, um, on iTunes right now. But yeah, I definitely bring it, send it over to you, man. We get that going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a few copies of that, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. You and my mother. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I listen to it on Spotify. Shit. No, yeah, nobody's buying it. <laughs> we listen to it for free? Hell yeah. Give me that shit. No, <laughs> but no, uh, man. Yo, we about at the end, man. It's been great. But before we go, I want to know at the end of the career, this is the last question I ask everybody. At the end of the career, and the comics are standing around talking, your name comes up. What you want them to remember you for? Man, I just want to be remembered, man, for being myself, man, being fearless. You know what I'm saying, and 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 always being a part of something that's bigger than me. Right. You know, I don't want motherfuckers to be like, "Yeah, I was a selfish nigga, man. I wanted, I was starving, and the nigga wouldn't give me a slice of pizza." You know, I don't want to be that cat, man. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah you know. So hopefully, I grow the art by the time I'm done with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, hard on, man. Great way to eat. That was dope. Bro. Great way, man. It was it was laughter, and we almost cried over here earlier. It was, <laughs> like, like, it was everything. It was, it was like the Five Hard Beats movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything but horror in it, huh? If I can finally get to that bitch Beyonce, I want to be remembered for that. I want to be remembered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm quite sure if she breaks up with Jay and you start dating, her, you will definitely be remembered for that shit. Yeah, I hope I have a shot, man. Because next time I see her, man, it's, it, it's gonna take all her security to stop me from from the shot I'm <laughs> It's me, the bowling guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, we signed off. Uh, my brother Lon Mo, <laughs> my brother Lon Mo here, <laughs> Matty Robinson, man Craig Smith on the phone. It's been Q and A with Ronnie Ray. I'm sorry, I forgot the last thing. I'm gonna say this shot every show. What is it? the bullshit one? Bullshit. One. Oh yeah, your life can't hit. If you about that bullshit. Hell yeah, okay. It's Q and A, Ronnie Ray, and um, and your life can't hit if you're about that bullshit. So um, get your shit together, kids, because adult is adult life is coming for your ass. Peace out. <laughs> 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 this shit gets real. Pay your bills, nigga. <laughs>